Excerpt from Bloodstained Seraphim Scriptorium. Audio drama by Natsuyo Usugi. Chapter 1, Part 1. Celestial Library. Hall of Souls. And the angels who did not keep their position of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting change for judgment on the great day. Jude, chapter 1, verse 6. Precariously balanced, Amira, the angelic young scribe, tried to wrangle the tall pile of leather-bound books he carried to keep them from falling. The books varied in scope, two thick with canon law, three with the lives of souls damned, one account of the seraphim Sebastian, Isazel's visitation Amira had newly penned. The last, a hymnal created in a human world, written by Father Andrew Mary, was for the monastic order known as the Sacred Servants unto Uriel, based on the doctrine revealed to man by Archangel Uriel. Amira raced through the labyrinth of corridors in the Hall of Souls, corridors in heaven, zigzagging around lingering angels and engaged in light banter of the divine. He carried volumes stacked seven high, barely controlled, as they jostled, meandering quickly down the hall. His route securitous, he made his way in haste, weaving through his superiors, who eyed him with disdain, at yet, again, being tardy. Remiss in his duties, he had been distracted, lulled into daydream by the joyous songs of the choir of angels lavishing praise on the Godhead, the Divine Trinity. Dozing off for hours, the music inspired his reverie, arm resting across the last page he had penned, open in the book. The quill left behind, a splotch of spilled ink, evidence of his meticulous work. Remembering the sliver of wet under his chin as he drooled on the desk, his mind wandered thoughts of the human world and Seraphim Sebastian and Azazel's multiple transgressions of late as he snapped out of it, urgency once more consuming his thoughts, remembering he was supposed to be in a hurry. Blinking hard, he reset his grasp on the pile of tomes and quickened his pace, not wanting to keep the librarian Astaroth, his superior, and mental waiting. It was Astaroth who had requested the pile of books he carried to the library. He had retrieved them from the overflow reshelving in the foyer three hours ago. He was so late. Oh, please don't fall, Amira warned the books as he tried to coax the sitting pile to obey as he rounded the corner. Spinning, he jerked the stack into obedience, the top book tipping as it ignored his unspoken desire, exerting his will on the petulant books, successful as he forced the pile into submission. The texts contained themselves, returning to order as commanded. A clumsy step his black cloth shoes with ivory embroidered floor designs slipped on the white marble tiles, moving too fast as he lost control. Quickness disturbed, he turned his back, slamming into the door, barely managing to hold on to the unruly stack. The heavy door, with its elaborate mahogany embossed torsos, contorted faces with open mouths moaned, exuding the low, painful yearnings of those trapped within its bowels, witness to the enduring agony of those desolate, relegated to purgatory. Mouths and limbs writhing, the door undulated, its torsos and heads projected onto the dark, shadowy surface, view into those lost for eternity as they wandered in the empty that Astra called the nothingness. Their moaning was a reminder to the scribes in the library of the gravity of the work performed within the intricate halls and dense corridors in the Hall of Souls. It was the effect of the work that influenced the eternal, the souls of all those in the human world below. The torsos in the door lurched, a high-pitched scream splitting in the hallway, assaulting Amira's ears. A cry from a wounded, once alive, jarred his attention, startling him as he jerked in reaction. The door creaking opened slightly, the mirror blanching, caught off guard. He tripped, left slipper flying off as he crashed to the floor, arms extended, 
futile as he tried to grasp at the stack, a last if effort to control. Yet sadly, he lost it, the pile spilling books explosively everywhere, tomes scattering, slamming loudly against the door, the floor, the wall. The disorganized calamity disturbing those inside, embarrassed at his clumsiness, he peeked through the slightly open door, noticing heads lifting from parchment as all attention focused on his catastrophe, breaking the solemn quiet ruling the library. Not now, he burst up, hopping twice, pulling his slipper back on touching the wall, trying to maintain his balance. Bending over, he scurried to pick up the books, frantic, trying to right his wrong. He hopped nervously, hoping Astaroth wouldn't notice the commotion. Wide, floppy troubadour cap falling off his head, it landed on the cloth shoe of another. You came to inquire, a deep frown covering the guest's face, a look of annoyance at being disturbed. The guest cringed, eyes switching in pain, as Amira noticed one of the heavy, cannon-long books resting on the person's toe. A supple, golden shoe, the book's weight substantial. A tome with more than a thousand pages having fallen on the thin foot. Forgive me, are you hurt? Amira apologized in the sing-song canter of the celestial tongue, the language of angels. Embarrassed and nervous, he realized his folly, sophomoric, unbecoming of a clerk of the sacred library in the Hall of Souls for so many eons. Not looking up at his victim, he was too concerned with himself and his own reputation. He knew a reprimand was coming on account of his clumsiness. A scolding, harsh words from Astra were his due. He could just guess. He would be called derelict, childish, careless, unbecoming of a scribe of the library. A pathetic, dejected sigh escaped unwanted from his lips. His young victim had porcelain skin, hair as black as moonless night, beautiful by all standards of heaven or the world of man. The youth's face glows with a curious brilliance, high cheekbones, large, deep, curious eyes, a glory unmatched even by the sun. He peeked around the library door, pulling his foot out from under the book, pushing on the barrier, bending down in front of a mirror, and picked up the derelict, thin, blue and black, speckled, Text, spine facing the ceiling, pages splayed open underneath, having fallen atop the scattered pile, loose from the scribe's grasp. The boys stood reviewing the volume, middle pages revealing their content, and spoke. This book is a soul reverie, is it not? The youth met the scribe's eyes, showing Amira the front cover of the book, focused on his question, his eyes curious. Amira jumped. Immediately snapping to attention, the books falling once more in anxious response to this particular library guest. Clearing his throat, he caught himself, lowering his eyes, ensuring he was reverent, not wanting to look on one, for he was unworthy. But a second glance, he realized he looked up, meeting the eyes of the divine child. Amira bowed deep, eyes to the floor his four conjoined chubby wings poking out from under his deep brown robes perched behind his, soldier, his shoulders, fluttering their white feathers, raising up and out in a nervous twitch. As for all cherubim, he was shocked by the young divine being, manifestation of the godhead he wished had not just witnessed his utter foolishness at the present moment. Flooded with embarrassment, his voice cracked, expelling an immature, obnoxious, anxious squeal as he tried but couldn't contain the grace and the energy that he felt of the divine child standing before him.